I want to tell you what happened to me last night. And have I told you about my neighbour before? The one that drives me crazy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was sitting there last night again at the end of a hard day's work. Anne, are you there? Anne, are you there? I know you're there. You're going to make me a cup of coffee. I let him in. Now, he knows I'm a maths teacher. And he likes to really drive me crazy. So he gave me this maths problem. And he said, take this to the class you're with tomorrow and see what they do with it. Is that all right? I've written it down. I'm going to tell you what it's about. It's about Christmas. And he's got to make first, second, and third prize envelopes for the Christmas party. So if those are the envelopes, you've got first prize, second prize, and third prize. Now you need to know, this is what he told me, he has a hundred, and I've written it down here, he has a hundred and twenty dollars. Now with prizes, the first prize is the biggest amount, isn't it? The second prize is the middle sized amount, and the third prize is the Lowest. lowest amount. So that's what he told me. Now this is what he said he was planning on doing. It doesn't make sense to me. He said he was going to put three-eighths of this hundred and twenty dollars into this envelope. Now he told me he was going to put three-quarters of what is left into this envelope. He didn't tell me how much he's putting in there. Anyway, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I don't think that's going to work. So what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, is see if you can work out whether this is a good way of sharing the money. Remember, most in the first envelope, a little bit less in the second envelope, and the least in the third envelope. Now, if it's not a good way, I want you to decide what fractions he should put into the envelopes. Any questions about that? Anybody not clear? You all all right? Now, there's only one rule when you work with me, and you know what that is, I think. I need to see all your working out and thinking on the page. I don't mind if you work with a partner. I'd like to see some sharing of ideas. That's fine. I'll come and talk to you whilst you're working. Is that okay? So the only thing really to remember is all your work on the page. Okay. Your time starts now. What I quite like about problem tie situations is once I've sent the students off to do their job, I'm redundant for a few minutes. I won't tell them what to do. It's not my job to rescue them. I give them enough think time, enough confidence, enough expectation that they can do it by themselves. Um, as soon as possible, I'll move in and find out what a student is thinking, what their plan of attack is, and I might ask some questions. I suppose prompting questions. Why are you doing that? Would something else help? Um, will that get you where you need to be? But I'm not going to tell them, I'm not going to show them um, how to do it. I want to see their thinking on the page. That's the main thing. Can you tell me what your thinking is so far? Well, we've um, drawn down what our problem is and what we're trying to figure out. And we're trying to figure out <coughs> eights of 120. So then we split the 120 into 60. And then we've figured out half that, half of it is. You split the 120 into 60. And that's yeah. told you. That's half of it. 120. And now we're trying to figure out how we can make eight notes. Okay. So if you. When you make it eight, how do you make eight? Can you tell me about eight? <clears throat> Having a group of eight as a whole, but like splitting, splitting it into different sections. Okay, so it's like sharing $120 into eight different parts, and how many of those eight did you do those dollars? Three. So how could you work out what one eighth of 120? What's half of a half? What's half of a quarter? So we just, wouldn't we half the two, the 60 again? Twice. Yeah, twice again. And let's try that see what happens. Half the 60 is 30. Half 30 is 15. So, I'll leave you to think about that, alright? Okay. Last work, I'll come back later. Um, really what I do, I move in as soon as one child's got enough on the page for me to have a conversation with that child, I'll move in and you'll see I'll ask them to tell me what they've done, why they've done it. I might ask 
Is there another way you could have done that? Is there another way you could have counted that? How did you work that out? Can you prove it to me? What I'm actually doing is an intensive interview to find out exactly what the child's bringing to the task and then I'll start to prompt. Um, I'll try and push to see if they can go a little bit further. I'm watching the child's face, I'm watching the work sample, I'm listening very carefully. I stop at a, the moment that I see a child's face change, I know I've done enough. Um, and then I ask permission to write the story of what they've told me on their work sample. It's really important to know I don't write on a page if I'm told I can't. I ask permission. If the child says no, then I write on a post-it. Um, what I write down, the annotations, is the documentary evidence. I now have documentary evidence, what that child did without assistance, what that child did with a prompt, and if I actually had to scaffold, what that child did as a result of a scaffold. So I've now got the documentary diagnostic information that I need. And then I'm going to leave you to see if you can use that information to work out what the correct answer is. Is that okay? So how many eights have we got? One eight. So one eight, half of a quarter. Um, when the students have had time to grapple and work on the challenge, um, I'll try and find two or three work samples. I might use a, I might use a sample with an error in it. I'll definitely use a sample from a less able student as well as a more sophisticated one. And when the students come to the carpet, what we try and do is involve the students in explaining what their thinking was, how their strategy worked. I might ask the rest of the class to get involved, to summarise what's said, ask questions. Um, so that learning, again, coming on the carpet, a community of learners, learning from each other, expecting to learn from each other, expecting to share ideas. Um, but also that's a time when the teacher can do a little bit of input. So that's the time where we might compare methods. How is this one mathematically similar to that one? It's also the time where the teacher might say, well, there was another way of thinking about this. Um, do you notice how much it would have helped if we'd grouped those in fives or, or whatever it is? Um, so basically the lesson isn't complete until the maths has been deconstructed by the students, till um, their work has been shared and the peer learning has taken place. Okay, we're going to do the reflection now. And as I came around, I saw some people coming up with some really good strategies, and I saw a particularly good strategy in the room for finding eights. Who thinks they had a really good strategy for finding eights of 120? Okay, you did. Do you two want to come up? Yeah. yeah. Great, up you come then. Okay, you're going to talk us through it? Make sure they can see what you're what doing. What we started off with is 120 as what we've got. We halved 120 to 60 and then we halved because we, f that we figured out that's a half and then we figured out a half of a half is a quarter and half of 60 is 30 and then we figured out what's another half of a quarter which is 1 eighth and we halved that which is 15 nice and that's work. our 1 eighth. Lovely and how does that help you work out 3 eighths? Because when you've got the eights, it's easier to split it, so then you'd be able to get the answer quicker with it, because you've already split the big number up down into smaller fractions. With so figures. then they're about what one eighth is, so now we can just add on to work on it we from get there to one twenty. Be able to get to three eighths. Okay, and did you work out what three eighths was? Yes. Yes. Can you write that up there for us? It was we went up by fifteens, and we figured out that it was forty forty five. That's for three. So we need the dollar sign there. Eight. Nice work. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop you there. Turn around and face your audience. Are you giving them the thumbs up because you followed that? The thumbs on the side because you need to hear it again, or the thumbs down because you didn't get it? I think it's thumbs up all the way around. Thank you, girls. If we want the students to have a positive disposition to maths, um, we've got to make sure everybody has success. You'll notice that I used work samples that weren't of a particularly high level. I even used work samples with mistakes in them. Um, now I can, I can work with those, I can get the whole class to work with those examples. I can make even the less able child feel successful. If a child's drawn, for instance, the 24 lollies and that was as far as they got with the problem, um, I can use those 24 lollies and use that child's work sample as a tool to get the rest of the class thinking. The child who didn't complete the problem doesn't have to feel 
um, any less successful. In fact, they feel highly successful because their work sample has been valued. Um, now, the other thing you'll notice that I do is I don't focus on the answer. I often leave the room and we haven't got to the answer. But what we have got to is unpacking and finding strategies and smart ways of dealing with parts within the problem. And that's my goal. I can come back tomorrow with a strategy lesson and pick up some of those pieces. Today, the focus is on the thinking. As I came around the room, I was really interested in the range of strategies that I saw. I saw a lot of people doing pizza fractions as their diagram to try and work out the quarters and things. But I came to this table here and there were two girls who had a completely different strategy and I've asked them if they'll draw it on the board for us. Is that all right, girls? Yeah. Okay, see if you can do that for us and explain as you go what you're doing and why. We start off by drawing eight circles. Bigger voice. And then we call it in three. Can you stop there for a moment? Hands up if you know why they coloured in three there. Because you would need three of the eight total to represent three eights. Thank you very much. Exactly okay. Mm -hmm. Could you move on, girls? And then we add cut, and then we have five left over, so we draw another five circles. And then we colour in another three, and we're trying to work off of that. Okay. Why did they colour in three of those? Why did they put five over there, and why did they colour in three of those? Because they got half, because they got what was left, and then they coloured in another three like they did with the three eights. <coughs> nice work. Nice strategy, isn't it? Mm. Okay, girls, do you mind finishing it off for us? We haven't tried that yet. You haven't tried that? Okay, maybe they can tell us. What do they need to do next, do you think? What's their next diagram going to look like? How many dots will be in their next diagram? Two. Two. Could you just draw the two dots up there for us? 